Hello, I'm Joshua Ruiz, and for my network security project, I'll be doing the cross-site request forgery attack. What is a cross-site request forgery attack? Well, uh, first of all, first of all, it involves a victim user, a trusted site, and a malicious site. The victim user holds an active session with a trusted site while visiting a malicious site. While the malicious site injects the HTTP request for the trusted site into the victim's user session, causing damages. Here is a simple diagram where we can see a perpetrator forges a request for a fund transfer to a website, in this case, a bank website. The perpetrator embeds the request into a hyperlink and sends it to the visitor who may be logged into the site. Well, in order the attack to work, the, way the visitor must be already locked into the website. Why? Because we need to attach the session cookie to the get request so that the website can verify us, can verify the request. So he already must be locked. After that, the visitor clicks on the link and he sends the request to the website. And the website uh, transfers the funds to the visitor. To the, uh, perpetrator. The cause of the CSRF vulnerability. As I mentioned before, the cross site request for your attack consists in two websites and a victim. So this lab consisted in three parts. For the first part of the lab, while the, while the user was already locked in, uh, in the trusted website, he opens a malicious website web page that contains an image tag and inside the tag, the URL with the modified parameter. In this case, the user ID. We need the user ID to be able to modify uh, some things in the user profile. Why an image tag? Well, because the image tag shoots a get request. That is why. Lastly, as I already mentioned, we have to attach the browser cookie so that the server uh, of the trusted side thinks that the request is being done from the inside and not from the outside. And that is why we need the user to be already locked in. The second part is a post request. For this part, uh, the, the user also must be locked in a trusted website. Then he opens a malicious web page that contains the data inside the URL. Here, we're not going to use a image tag but we're going to insert some data, a chunk of data inside the URL. URL. In this case of the lab, uh, we will craft uh, an HTML uh, file as the form where the user edits his profile. For example, here we can see we're going to log in. We need to get used to this form because we need to craft it as much similar as we can, as similar as we can. And for the first part, Bobby, another member of this web page, will send a will add himself to Alice's friends without Alice knowing that. The only thing he needs to know is the user ID of Alice. It's very simple to know the user ID of each member. So we can go to here to members. We go to inspect, in this case, F12, here in inspect element. And we go to the body, the deep class. Here we go to the deep class body again, the inner layout, and here we can see the user ID of each member. For Sami, the user ID is 45, for Charlie 44, Bobby 43, and Alice, as you can see, 42.
Here we have the HTML document. You see it's very simple. So here is the image tag with the URL. And here is the parameter we set it to bottom. For the second part, it's a little bit more complicated. So here we're recreating the form. We only want the, 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 the fields that we want to change, that we want to edit. So here in the name, well, it's for Alice. The brief description, we're going to write Bobby is my hero. And this to means to make it public. So the people can say it. This is the web page. We need to go to edit it. And here is to submit the request to forge the post. Let's get back to this. So this is the post request. Of course, there are some countermeasures for the attack. There are two approaches. One, the secret token approach. is the one we're going to use for the last part of the lab. The other one, a refer header approach. The secret token approach is that uh, web applications can embed a secret, to a secret token in their pages. This will be added after the parameters in a get request, for example. And all requests coming from these pages will carry this token. So because of the cross-site pages cannot uh, obtain this token, their forged request will be easily identified by the server and they won't be verified. And the other approach is that the web applications can also verify the real page of the request using their favorite header. However, due to privacy concerns, this header information may have already been filtered out of the client site. So as, well, as I was mentioned, this is the approach that we'll be using. It embeds two parameters. ELGGTS and the ELGG token in the request as a countermeasure to con a cross site request for your attack. The two parameters are added to the HTTP message body for the post request and to the UR URL string for the HTTP GET request, as I mentioned before. So the first part of the lab was this one, as I already showed you. The second part is the post request, and then we will enable the secret token countermeasure to see that the tax won't be able to do any damage or work. So let's get to it. As we can see, Alice doesn't have any friend, but she noticed that Bobby wrote a block. She was very intrigued to know what was what was the, the post about. So she copied the link and she pasted it. Here, she clicked here in tab one. So now, nothing has happened. You see, Alice doesn't have any friend. But after we click here, we can write here wherever we want. Bobby is added to Alice's friends, without Alice knowing it. But Bobby wants more. Bobby wants Alice to edit his prof her profile and to write that uh, Bobby is her hero. So Bobby sends her a message. You see, we did it the profile of Alice without Alice knowing that Umbrot Bobby is my hero. Now, how can we avoid this? So here, in this function, the gatekeeper, we only need to comment this out. And we'll try again the attack. the description and save. 
would say we want to go to the attacker's webpage again. And we'll go to either of both. Let's try this one. Let's find it. Okay. The web server cannot uh, verify the post request. And you'll see here in the profile, profile I'm sorry, form is missing. A reference, I use the seed labs instructions and that's everything. Thanks for watching.